Hello everybody and today we are going to talk about the different COVID vaccines and which one I would personally recommend with chronic illness. And to be honest with chronic illness to the general public pretty much the same thing. I'm hoping the audio is picking up pretty good. It's kind of windy today where I'm recording. But first of all we're going to start with my standard disclaimer. I am a medical professional. I'm a registered nurse. I have work in, worked in vaccination clinics before. That being said, I am not your medical professional, I am not your doctor. Always consult your team of medical professionals prior to making any medical decision or taking any medication. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So in America, we have the three standard vaccines, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson. And today, we are gonna talk about some of the differences between them. And like I said, what I would recommend. I've been getting a lot of questions from family and friends about which medication vaccine I would recommend. And because I am a nurse and I've worked in a vaccination clinic before. And so I thought it would just be a good idea to do a video just for everybody, just to get the information out there and just to give you an idea of what I think. So today we are going to go over and I got a handy whiteboard, picking up some tips here from Meet Kevin. We're gonna go over the three different vaccines. We're gonna go over the effective, overall effectiveness, hospital prevention rate, freezer storage time, fridge storage time, room temperature storage time, number of doses it requires, and the common allergies that people are having to each individual vaccine. Now, why are some of these important? Some of these are important because working in a vaccination clinic, I know how overwhelming it can get for the staff at times. You have a crap load of information to chart and you have a schedule you have to keep up with. So sometimes, especially with the storage of vaccines, there's definitely room for error in there, which is why in my personal opinion, just mine, um, the storage times do make a big difference in the effectiveness of the vaccine and the overall risk that you can contract COVID-19 after getting your vaccine. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the, with the overall effective rate. So for Pfizer, Pfizer has come out with an overall effective rate of 95%, and pardon my horrible handwriting because I'm trying not to smudge the rest of the board. Moderna's vaccination overall effective rate is 94%, and Johnson & Johnson is coming out at around 67%. To each their own, these vaccination or these overall effective rates are the effective rates for you getting symptomatic COVID-19. You can still get the infection with any of the vaccines, but the goal of the vaccines is to help so you don't get as symptomatic of an infection. Which brings us down to the hospitalization prevention rate. Pfizer, 100%. Moderna, 100%. Johnson & Johnson, 100%. This is what most of us are concerned about is the hospitalization rate. We all know that people who go into the hospital typically do not have good outcomes. Therefore, any vaccine really takes care of our main problem, which is hospital overwhelming and people having poor outcomes from hospitalizations and even having long hauler syndrome. That does relate to long hauler as well, because if you do come out of the hospital, most people are having problems with long hauler syndrome. So that's something to consider as well. And that brings us to the storage of the vaccines, which is very, uh, very interesting. Now we all know Pfizer, when they orig originally came out, English today, when they originally came out, they said that their vaccine had to be stored in an ultra cold storage. It still does some storage, um, regarding the vaccine have recently changed and I did incorporate those into my new or uh, my information here and all links for where I got my information will be down in the description box below so please check it out and always always with anything you find on the internet verify your sources so freezer storage for Pfizer two weeks and this is a standard freezer a freezer you have in your house you can keep the Pfizer vaccine in that for two weeks Moderna you can keep in for 30 days. And Johnson & Johnson is not applicable because theirs is totally refrigerator storage. So as you can see, there's quite a few differences there and we'll tie all these together in a minute. 
refrigerator storage for Pfizer, five days. They let you keep it in the fridge for five days. Moderna, 30 days. And Pfizer until the expiration date. Or, excuse me, Johnson & Johnson until the expiration date. And the room temperature storage. This is specifically for a vial that has been punctured, been opened, where they start taking doses out to give people. Six hours for Pfizer, six hours for Moderna, and two hours for Johnson & Johnson. Very interesting. So tying all of these together, this is where human error comes in. A lot of us don't think about human error, but human error can have a significant result in our overall outcomes. Um, for example, if the vaccine is left out longer, is it as effective? We don't really know, but we can suspect that perhaps it may not be as effective um, as if it is kept with proper storage. So if you're really busy vaccinating a whole bunch of patients trying to keep up on your charting, an emergency comes up, someone passes out in the waiting room, you got to run out there, you got to help with that, you got to get them transported to the hospital, etc. All of that plays into this. If you get back to your vaccine and you don't check the time that it's been out, that could be a problem because that vaccine could have been out at Johnson & Johnson, could have been out for three hours. Is it as effective? We don't know. Um, Moderna and Pfizer, typically that just about covers a whole vaccination clinic shift. So if you know you're getting near the end of your shift, you know, throw it out. Um, but the two hours is what really concerns me the most with Johnson & Johnson. Um, and what really concerns me with Pfizer is like the two week in the freezer because sometimes unless you're making a diligent effort to go through each vaccine and double check, you know, a lot of human error can occur in here. Not only that, but you have a lot of responsibilities as a nurse in a clinic. I know I've been there. I've been a vaccination nurse. There's just a lot of responsibilities. And just to advocate for the nurses, they're all doing the best they can They're do with what they're given. They're doing the best they can in any situation. But accidents do happen. Accidents do happen. So keep that in mind when you are if you have the option to pick your vaccine. The next thing, number of doses, everyone probably knows this, Pfizer 2, Moderna 2, Johnson & Johnson 1. So with that, if you have someone who is deathly afraid of shots, deathly afraid of needles, doesn't like hospitals, doesn't like stuff like that, personally, I recommend Johnson & Johnson due to the fact it's only a one dose vaccine. Um, and why I recommend the Johnson & Johnson one dose for a lot of people is because of follow-up. Now I have a relative down in Milwaukee who got Moderna and he got his first Moderna and he happened to have some fever with it, his first dose. Or no, he actually had chills and he thought he had a fever and some people are a little, little more exaggerating than others and he thought he was gonna die it's just who he is some people are like that and you all know somebody like that so um, but he thought he was gonna die so he asked his wife well can we cancel the second vaccine I don't want to do that well the problem with canceling the second vaccine is you've not followed through so you're not gonna hit that efficiency rate if you're going for the efficiency rate you're not gonna hit that efficiency rate so you have to follow through. With Pfizer and Moderna, you have to follow through. You have to prepare. Like I've said in other videos, you have to prepare. You have to anticipate the outcomes. So that way, you're able to get the best outcome possible. If you're not going to be able to follow up, and you know you're someone who's not going to be able to follow up and get the second vaccine, if you can, get, just get the Johnson & Johnson and be done with it. It's just simple as that. Really simple. Now, going into allergies, the most common thing that people are reacting to with the Pfizer and Moderna is something called PEG. And it's specifically PEG 2000, but we'll just go for PEG here. Now, what is PEG? 
It's a component that is commonly found in a couple different medications I can name off the top of my head. Number one is Miralax. A lot of older people take Miralax. Well, not even older people. Even kids take Miralax. If you've taken Miralax with no problems, you shouldn't have any problems with Pfizer or Moderna. No guarantees. Remember, this is just for educational purposes. Check with your doctor. Um, but you shouldn't have any problem. If you've take, used a lidocaine patch, lidocaine patches have those in. I've used those in the past, never had any problems, didn't have any problems with the vaccine in and of itself. And Johnson & Johnson, the ingredient that most people are reacting to is called polysorbate. And I'm sorry, I'm looking down on my notes here. Polysorbate. Polysorbate is very similar in chemical structure to PEG. And that's where they think people are reacting is because it's so um, similar in chemical structure. As someone who has allergies myself, I do know that things that are similar in structure do cause me to react. Um, for example, I have a gluten allergy. And if I were to eat barley or rye, they are similar enough in structure that they would make a person react. So, overall, if I were to recommend a vaccine, if you had a choice between all three of them, based on the human error rate, allergies, everything like that, I would still get the Moderna. And why would I get the Moderna? Because of the storage. Primarily because of the storage. It has less ability for human error because you can store it in the freezer for 30 days hopefully by 30 days you would be able to catch if you missed something you can store it in the refrigerator for 30 days an unopened vial you can store it on the counter for six hours typically your vaccine clinics run anywhere from six to eight hours some i know they're setting up some in my local area that are only going to be four hours a day Moderna, perfect. When you're done at the end of the day, hopefully you measure out the right doses, right amount of doses, give them to people, and then you get your next vial out of the refrigerator the next day. So that is my personal opinion. Um, like I said, please always check with your medical professional regarding any questions, any concerns, anything prior to getting the vaccine and I do have other videos as many of you know I do have chronic illness I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome mast cell activation syndrome and POTS and I got Moderna it was a rough ride after the second dose but I'm doing okay today um, there are other videos I'll try to link some throughout this video um, but go ahead and check those out if you have any additional questions about any experiences or anything like that and please subscribe. Let's subscribe so we can get some videos shared with some other people. Subscribe, share, have a great day.